Hi, everyone. Chad Burton and Billy Trasso here from Modern Law Practice. And today we are talking about moving law firms into uh, a real a retail market. So traditional law firm moving to retail. How are you doing today, Billy? Pretty good. How are you? Good. I'm good. good. Tell me if we yeah. have a weird connection. I don't think we do. Okay. Do we? I think we're fine. Um, are we slow on your end? A little choppy, but that's all right. Okay, cool. All right, Re retail market. So one of the things that is being contemplated for your law firm is the idea of taking your uh, firm and moving it into a retail space. So let's start with this. What's the current setup of your, your office space and locations? Um, so we have locations that are spread out around the Phoenix Valley, which is a huge geographic area. People are mostly mobile and their home offices are whatever office is, is closest to them. So we've kind of done, a, a, we're treating office space differently, um, targeting clients near our offices, trying to locate offices in, um, in very desirable areas and moving completely away from the Regis concept. So one of the offices is shared with another lawyer. I think office sharing is great, but um, we have used co-working spaces like Regis for many years and really have never found that they've been all that effective. So we're not doing that at all. So you're, you're sharing office space that's Scottsdale. What, how's that go? That's pretty new. How's it going so far? Yeah, so we've got a Peoria location and a Scottsdale location that opened about the same time, which I think was in March or February of just this year. So they're just a couple months old. They seem older than that, especially the Peoria location, which is now fully staffed and really is just very similar to our main Mesa location. It's staffed, it's got conference rooms, it's got waiting areas, it's fully ours. We have not subleased to anyone um, and it's going really well. Got it. Okay. So you've got your, your main office you've been in for years. You now have Peoria, which is like an hour away. It's an hour away from the Mesa office. Right. So and I have two attorneys who live out there in the West Valley. It's expanding extremely quickly. There's probably fewer lawyers out there. It's um, there's a lot of people that live there. Not a lot of commercial space, although we're in a, we're not in the newest area. So it is still fairly established. Got it. Okay. And then there's North Scottsdale, which is where the other, the, the office sharing location is. Yeah. And, and for that space, what we did, I mean, if you look, look back at the video on our YouTube page about Google maps and you will, you will learn more about why I picked that space and how cool Google maps is. Um, it's one of the videos that we have that has the highest number of views. Like it's definitely worth you watching. Okay. And we can probably link to it below in this one. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so you have that. So traditional office space set up. Um, most people are going to be familiar with what you're talking about, whether it's renting or lease to own or office sharing. Uh, the The firm is exploring moving into a retail space. So how did that all get started? So this is kind of a crazy thing. Many, many lawyers are going to think this is nuts, but it's the type of thing that I really like to explore. I like to explore wacky, creative, outside the box ideas. They don't bother me at all. And so what happened was I was walking in Walmart in um, Santan Valley, which is South Gilbert. So anybody, I, anybody nationally isn't going to have any idea what we're talking about, but the Phoenix Valley is just massive, 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 massive. And it's made up of a bunch of different cities. And this South Gilbert area is one of these um, pretty wealthy areas. Inside this Walmart that I'm not usually in because it's a little ways from my house, there was open retail space. And it said, you know, to rent from us, um, apply here. And so I started thinking about that and um, didn't really want to put modern law in a Walmart, but I have this sister company I do over that's legal doc prep that's been around a long time. As you know, or as we've talked about, um, paralegals are going to be licensed to be legal practitioners here in Arizona. And I think that there's a big opportunity to do 
high volume, low cost, mostly using non-lawyers, and what better place than being in a super high-end Walmart? So I started exploring that and um, contacted them, filled out their leasing paperwork. It was all pretty straightforward. They just wanted you to be an established business with good revenues, not new, not likely to default. Except that they said no. They said they would not lease to me. Um, and I followed up and I said, wait, is it just this? Who you're talking to? Nobody tells me no. Is that what you said to them? Um, no, I did <laughs> I not. I mean, this was just via email. Nobody would call me. Nobody would call me. And the people that I did call were just, you know, receptionists in Arkansas who didn't have a lot of information for me. <laughs> what? Go ahead. That's what they sounded like to me. I'm in Arizona. <laughs> so... Then I get this email rejection. I write back and I ask them, are you telling me no just to this particular Walmart or all Walmarts in Arizona? Crickets. That means they don't want you at all. They don't want me at all, which is not logical because- Right, because who says no to Billy Tarasio? That's not it. That is not oh, it at all. Oh, that's not it. Okay. The thing is when I filled out the lease application, I did not fill it out for I do over. I filled it out using all of Modern Law's information. And Modern Law is not a new company. We are, we are a very old, stable, financially solid company with cash reserves. We are not high risk for Walmart. And based on the guidelines, Walmart should want us in there. And I did some research and there are other law firms that have space that they've rented from Walmarts around the country. Well, in all fairness though, that, that research also showed that those law firms were more full service. What you're proposing was the idea of taking a family law firm within, in or, I mean, we're projecting why you could possibly get rejected here. You know, the audacity of Walmart to reject you, but I know <laughs> it's like different video. Um, <laughs> the uh, so the you know Walmart we know is a very you know traditionally at least publicly is viewed as a very family values oriented organization. The other examples that are out there are not just divorce firms. They are more full service consumer. Firms. But when I did my leasing application, I highlighted not family law, but consumer law because legal practitioners can do bankruptcy. They can do immigration. No, they can't do immigration because immigration is federal, but legal doc preparers can do immigration. So I highlighted all sorts of areas of law, not just family law. Right. Which is interesting about that. If somebody did half a second of research, they'd look at modern law and be like, this is not a full service consumer law firm. While it may be an amazing steady organization, they're now suggesting that they want to go into different practice areas that they haven't done before. So lots of thoughts that it could be, but fortunately that's not the end of the story and we can keep going. Wait, so, I'm not done with this story. So okay. Chad's <laughs> concept or Chad's, Chad's idea is that Walmart rejected me because either A, they hate family law or B, they think that we are incompetent to practice anything other than family law. I reject the premise. I do not agree. I do but not I think that's that, what's going that's on. Fine. I think Walmart, so just for context, you all should know that Arizona ha is allowing non-lawyers to own law firms. That means companies like Walmart can acquire law firms and put them in Walmart. Or start their own. Or start their own. And my best guess is that Walmart has something in the works for Arizona. And it doesn't involve you. It does not involve me. <laughs> I'm out. Apparently, I should have tried this concept earlier. But whatever. We moved on, looked at other options, and then found... <clears throat> Um, that I just wanted to look like, okay, well, if Walmart's not going to work, what are other options? Right. What are other creative alternative options for a different way to deliver legal services, a different way to practice, a different way to reach a market segment? Costco. Costco, right. Costco, no. Costco was a no. Um, Why is that? Well, they don't rent out space like Walmart does. They rent right. out booths. And so you got to go, like I could rent out like a booth, but most of what they rent out are service, home service providers. So it, it didn't quite fit into their model. That's why Costco wouldn't work. Um, 
do you want to talk about other ideas you have? Other, other things to cover, Jack? No. Um, so where are you at now with it? Well, I found that malls are doing a really interesting concept called pop-up leasing, where malls are allowing new businesses, emerging businesses, startups, to rent kiosks or fill their empty space because retail was hit very hard during the pandemic at very favorable lease rates um, at very short term. So typically when you enter into a lease term, you're looking at a minimum of usually five years. And so, uh, and you got tenant improvements and it's a big, huge, like you can't experiment with a five-year lease. So um, I, I, reached out nearby that same Walmart is a very fancy swanky mall this is not the same demographic as um Walmart they've got an apple store a coach um well it's a high-end swanky outdoor mall and it's slammed all the time but there's space available and there's pop-up leasing available so I started exploring pop-up leasing in a mall okay and so where are, so did you find space that you like in this pop-up? So it's interesting. Um, I, I got a hold of the, you know, leasing agent for specialty leasing and learned a lot about how this works. And essentially you're taking the space as is. It is your job to transform it into what you want it to be. You pay a flat fee, so it's not a triple net. It's it's a it's a gross lease. It's cheap, um, but you can be kicked out with thirty days notice if a national tenant comes in. Like a Walmart? I'm just <laughs> not <laughs> no, Walmart. <laughs> not Walmart. And you can't. I mean, your improvements. You can you do the improvements on your own, but they. I mean, for example, like you can't put walls all the way to ceiling. Like, so there's some like lack of permanency to it that they have. I'm not sure the, 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 where I'm at right now is I'm getting ready to make a proposal and the proposal does include walls that go to the ceiling. Okay. So I don't know if that will be rejected or not. Um, the leasing is also different. So what I had to, the first thing I had to do is I looked at all the different spaces that were available within the Santan mall that were open and available for pop-up leasing. And there was quite a few. Some of them were designed for um, restaurants. Some of them were like huge Disney store type things. And this space that I have um, kind of landed on that I want to move forward on is um, an old nail salon. And it looks pretty crappy, but it's about 2000 square feet and it's $1,500 a month. And it just needs some cosmetic work to fix it up. Now, in order to even apply, I have to give them all of my plans for what that space is going to look like. I have to give them sketches. I have to give them visuals. They want to know that their swanky mall is going to look pretty. And I've never had to do that before with a commercial lease. Right. And so you're, you're about to put in the application. Mm -hmm. where you're at. Okay. What do you envision, you know, as far as using it, like, what is it, you know, what does it look like when you use it? So you mentioned earlier that Walmart was going to be good for I do over. Mm -hmm. um, you've got your traditional, mo you know, modern law office you know, space in these three other areas. What does this one look like? So this is going to be a little bit of a hybrid. So I want to put modern law in the mall and not I do over because modern law has a lot more brand recognition than I do over does. And modern law is much more lucrative than I do over is. So, but I want it to be like modern law light or modern law express, where I want it to appeal to people as a efficient project-based option where you can come in and you can hire, hire attorneys or paralegals for easy, you know, uncontested stuff or um, real estate deeds or update your power of attorney or your advanced directive. Um, super easy, more accessible, more affordable, that sort of concept. 
And you said hybrid earlier. Are you suggesting that you're going to have legal services plus like get your nails done since it's a nail salon? <laughs> no, no, no. We're going to, yeah. it's not going to be a nail salon. What I mean by hybrid is like, it's something in between modern law and I do over. It's modern law because it's more valuable to me to make it be modern law. And the brand isn't hurt by being in this high end swanky mall. The brand would be hurt by being in Walmart. So we're calling it Modern Law Express. We're branding it as, you know, an offshoot of Modern Law Easy Peasy, sort of like, you know, Ann Taylor and Ann Taylor Loft or Gap and Gap Kids. Like, you know what you're getting, but you also know it's different. Right. And then you're going to have uh, like conference room space or video space, right? So that people can um, use them in lots of different ways. So for example, if like somebody wanted to come in and jump on Zoom, but they're not comfortable doing it from home, they could meet with a, an LP, a lawyer, or somebody else, you know, in a remote setting. Yeah. So there's these two waxing rooms that I'm going to turn into. I know it's crazy. Right? I know. It's, it's, crazy. it's a hybrid. It's they're a very, hybrid. they're, they're small little spaces that were used as waxing rooms in this nail salon. And they're going to be transformed into like a, um, a pod. So if you've ever worked in a co-working space, um, there are these small little like phone booth type things that are set up to give you some privacy. Um, it'll have good lighting. It'll have good sound. It'll have good background. It'll have good video quality. Um, there's one conference room. Um, there's and and I'm going to staff this with my intake people because essentially the job is my it's intake in person. Right. And it's kind of fun in the sense that it's new and, you know, you look at other stores that are new that, you know, the, the staff could be standing around hoping somebody comes in to buy their soap or whatever they're selling. If you have your intake people there, they can still be doing the firm intake, even if it's slow at the mall, because it's July and it's 125 degrees out Right. that, you know, you'll be able to like people will still be busy. They can just be doing different things. Right. Yeah. So I don't have to, I think I am going to have to hire for some staffing because part of being at a retail location is you need to be open during different hours. You need right. to stay open until like something like seven o'clock. Um, so that is kind of cool because it gives people an, the ability to access legal services outside of business hours. Um, but it also means I probably will have to hire some part-time people to help cover extra hours. The other thing that we want to do is offer like pro bono days and um, do a little bit more with events with this location, with partnerships, do cr some creative marketing with it. And then the other really fantastic thing about the space is it has four huge windows that I can use as signage at this high end swanky mall. So it's like a billboard, a call center, a meeting space, all in one. Get your toes done. No, not there. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe version two. You never know. Cool. So know. when do you, I mean, in your ideal set, you know, in ideal world, when do you think this will be off and running for, you know, us to do a second video on this topic? Nothing ever goes fast enough for me ever, ever, ever. I've been looking at this for a little while. I got, I had to bring in a contractor I don't know about you guys across the country, but at least in Phoenix, getting people to do um, real estate contracting work is really an issue. There's a huge backlog. So I found a general contractor. I got a bid. It was a lot more than I thought it was going to be. I had to decide, like, do I think I can find somebody else who can do it in time or do I just pay more? Is it worth it? And then how do I get the visuals set up? So I've got a designer, but the designer... It's really great. And she's worked with us on other projects, but she's never had to come up with like sketches and like mock-ups of new space. And so how are we going to do that? Plus we need to design the new brand because Modern Law Express is a little different than Modern Law. We need to decide what language. So <sighs> this is the yeah. easiest part. The, the, the easiest part is right now is before I'm applying for the lease. So if I sound overwhelmed now, I know that I'm getting myself into a massive project that's going to be so fun, but also really different and a steep learning curve. Um, so I hope to have the lease application in this week. Um, I've I've already met with them and they're willing to lease to me. So I'm not going to have this Walmart problem of just, we don't like Billy. Rejection. 
no, I'm not going to have rejection. I'm confident. Um, so take you know, part two. Part Let's two. Say it. <laughs> well, we found this trailer in the desert and it's going to be great. People love to go to the trailer. The mall didn't work out. That'll be the No, next. that's I not know. happening. Um, so we're applying for the lease. They, they said they can turn around this pop-up leasing within, um, you know, 15 days. Then of course this construction is going to have to be done. The signage is going to have to be ordered. Yeah. There's um, not a lot of negotiation on it. It's it, the, you know, at least the way they present it is the lease documentation is what it is. It's super simple too. It's super simple, except don't apply unless you give us visuals that show us what the space is going to look like. And you're willing to you know, take the risk of getting booted in 30 days if somebody cooler shows up. Right. It's a big risk. But they have others. I mean, they have other spaces that you know, perhaps could be transformed. So Yeah. So, I mean, I asked the leasing agent, you know, how often do people get kicked out? She said it's very, 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 like, not often. And she actually steered me away from one space that she was pretty sure was in the perfect location in the middle of the mall. She's like, this is going to go to a national tenant. You don't want this. So the space that I'm looking at, um, I'm very like unlikely to get booted out of. There's other space available. Um, it's not that desirable. There's not all these like national nail salons running around vying for space. So I feel fairly confident that this is a risk I'm willing to take. And then I have the option of entering into a lease for anywhere between six and 12 months. Cool. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Uh, there'll be more to come on this. I'm sure, especially, you know, if you watch her closely, you know, almost hyperventilate. So <laughs> Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Billy. Uh, have a great day. Bye.